Hey, everybody, and welcome back to a new episode of Gay With God. And I want to introduce you to a really cool guy. Um, his name is Pastor Chester Hitchcock, and he received his BA in theology from Columbia Union College in 1991. He has finished half of the courses towards a master's in pastoral ministry from Andrews University. In 1991, Chester, Pastor Chester, see, this is where I go. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. My mom named me Chester, so you can call me Chester. <laughs> In 1991, Pastor Chester was hired by the Ohio Conference of Seventh-day Adventists and served in several multi-church districts until he retired in 2018. In 2002, he published an audio Bible memory program called the Gospel Memory Course. Hundreds of people have enjoyed this course at home or as a seminar taught by Pastor Chester in their local church. The Gospel Memory Course was published and marketed in CD form through adventsource.org and is now available free in video form for all who are interested in learning it. Pastor Chester also enjoys ministering as an ally and advocate for the LGBTQ plus community and their families who have been misjudged and ostracized from many houses of worship. His mission is to demonstrate how the Bible has been misinterpreted and therefore understand in regards to what are referred to as clobber verses. And we'll get into that, I'm sure. In addition to the Gospel Memory Course and a series titled God Loves the LGBTQ Plus Community, Pastor Chester also has a YouTube series on the book of Revelation and a variety of other biblical topics. And guys, I'm going to make sure that you get that link to the uh, videos that you can watch that Pastor Chester is doing, and you will not be disappointed. The, the reason he is here is because I saw his videos and I couldn't stop watching them. And so I wanted to bring him to you guys. So Pastor Chester, welcome to Gay With God. Thank you, Midge, so much for this invitation. I've been really looking forward to this. Me too. As soon as I, I I'm, I'm glad that we didn't have to go further out than just a week or so, because That's right. <laughs> I was so excited <laughs> that, um, that you would be able to come on. So as an ally and as a minister and coming from the, uh, the Adventist church, um, I, I was just so awestruck that you were able to come through your ministry in in a in a denomination much like mine and much like most of my listeners denominations that were very hardcore on the lgbtq community so i want to just get right into it and as we talked before um i hit the record button only god knows where this conversation is going to go we'll Amen. see that's we'll right. see where it needs to go and that's exactly <laughs> where it's going to go so tell us your story well, as you mentioned, I began my full-time ministry um, in 1991 after receiving my uh, bachelor's degree, and and of course, none of the um, clobber uh, verses were addressed uh, in my college classes, and and at that time, no one in my family, and even still, no one in my family is openly gay, um, and the small conservative churches where I served, uh, it was never an issue though I'm sure that there were um, closeted LGBTQ people in my congregation that I suspected and tried my best to make them feel as comfortable as I could as with everyone else. But it wasn't until around 2014 or 2015 that the LGBT, LGBTQ topic really became necessary for me to address as a theologian. Uh, at that time, two women walked into my church with two small children. And it turned out that it was actually a husband and a wife, and the children were their biological children, but the father had transgendered. And at that particular time, his wife was supportive. Um, and though I knew that my denomination was not fully open or affirming uh, to the LGBTQ community, uh, and, and I had never studied what are referred to as the clobber verses. Mm -hmm. um, I did understand the gospel to the point that I knew that God somehow was open and affirming to them. So I just uh, very openly uh, welcomed them in every way that I could. That was in 2014, 15. In 2016, the father, the one who had transgendered, had never been baptized and wanted to be baptized. And so I baptized her. And that's when the homophobic people in the church really came <laughs> out of the woodwork. 
boom, here they come. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and even though they had been in our church for a little over a year, and the people were comfortable with that, they were not comfortable when I baptized her. Um, and so they fussed to the conference leadership to the point that by 2018, the conference leadership had decided that it was time for me to move on. Oh. Um, and they weren't saying that it had anything to do with the LGBTQ topic. Um, I, and, and I wasn't fired, nor was I defrocked, as some might say, you know, okay. uh, but I am certain that it had everything to do with them feeling that I needed to relocate. You know? mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. which I also knew that having on my record that I had baptized a transgender would make me tainted mm -hmm. uh, for other conferences. Uh, mm -hmm. And it would be risky for other conferences to hire me. So um, fortunately, I was within a year uh, of, of being of retirement age. So I just retired. And mm -hmm. um, now, and, and backing up just a little bit mm -hmm. between. 2014, 2015, when I met this couple and 2016 of baptizing her, mm -hmm. I really did a deep study of the clobber verses for myself. Okay. I wanted to see for myself how the gospel really dealt with these issues. So, so by the time uh, I was pushed into retirement, <laughs> I, I was very comfortable by saying that the Bible is not anti-gay and God is not homophobic. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I launched a YouTube ministry in my retirement where I deal with biblical issues of all kinds and primarily with the LGBTQ. And as for my family, as of yet, none of them, except what I say, uh, on the LGBTQ issue, uh, perhaps someday they will. Uh, I, I hope that it, I hope that it's before someone in my family who may be closeted comes out in suicide. You know, mm -hmm. I, yes. I, I hope that my family comes to realize what I'm saying before that happens. Mm -hmm. um, so, so my message to the LGBTQ community is the, the title of my series, God Loves the LGBTQ Plus Community. Mm. But even further than that, God more than just loves them. He fully accepts them and affirms them for who they are, because that's who he created them to be. Um, and my my ministry is not just to the LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. but maybe even more specifically to the straight community mm. to help them realize that these clobber verses are misinterpreted and therefore misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And misinterpreted Bible verses are not the word of God, even right. if they're found in scripture. Mm. Uh, j just if something is, you cannot misquote or mis interpret God's word and expect God to be comfortable with that any more than someone could misquote or misrepresent our words and expect us to, to support their misrepresentation of who we are and what we believe. Right. So I, I, I really want to explain to those who are straight that these verses are misinterpreted. So when I started becoming an ally and an advocate, uh, as I said, I studied the Bible verses for myself. It, it's like in, in Galatians chapter one, Paul says that uh, when he decided to start preaching the gospel, he didn't first go up to Jerusalem and ask Peter, what should I preach? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it was three years later, you know, he's been preaching the gospel for three years. Three years later, he goes and talks to Peter and, and another disciple, you know. I took the very same approach. I'm not going to get my theology from other LGBTQ allies or other LGBTQ people. I want to get it from God's word. I want to use my skills of, of understanding God's word, of interpreting, of, of using the biblical languages. Um, and once I did that, then I began to read other books from other allies, and I began to read books that LGBTQ people had written. Um, and I did those things much kind of the same way that Paul did. Uh, also, I would add that the Apostle Paul is best known as the Apostle for Righteousness by Faith or Grace. But a lot of LGBT, LGBTQ people don't like Paul. 
because some of the clobber verses come from his writings. Right. And so they see him as being homophobic, um, chauvinistic, um, arrogant, you know, so, so if, if Paul's words though are misinterpreted, we can't blame Paul for that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Good point. Okay, everybody, we need to back off Paul just a minute. Let's see. Let's yeah. let it settle. <laughs> so, so my goal is to unclobber yeah. what Paul has said, to, mm -hmm. to give the proper interpretation of what Paul said, not only for the LGBTQ plus community, but also for those who consider him to be chauvinistic or consider him to be arrogant. Um, and, and sometimes if we're going to make any sense of this, if we're going to clear up these misinterpreted passages, sometimes we have to come off as arrogant. Mm. We have to come off as saying this is foolishness. This is nonsense that people are understanding this that way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if those things come out arrogant, then so they must. <laughs> you know. So, so part of my challenge is or, or my goal is not just being an ally for the LGBTQ plus community, but sticking to my original purpose to be an ally and an advocate for the word of God. Mm. And to do that, honestly, um, and, and it, whether that is for LGBTQ issues or, or anything else. So I don't feel that me being an ally and an advocate for LGBTQ is any different than my original purpose of mm -hmm. being an ally and an advocate for God's word. Right. So, so that's what I'm doing. And I'm doing it now on YouTube. All, all, all that retirement has done is changed the venue from which I do my ministry. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Better travel time. <laughs> yeah, yes. And another thing that I like about it is instead of standing behind a pulpit where people have come to hear what they only want to hear. Right. I'm online and I'm I'm preaching clearly and boldly. And some might think arrogantly <laughs> what the Bible really says. And if they don't like it, they have no leverage right. over whether I say it or not. Right. The most they can do is make rude comments, which I'll just delete. <laughs> <laughs> no harm, no foul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I just really love where this has taken me professionally. I'm thankful that I was at retirement age to where yeah. I can I can comfortably do that. Right. And 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 I'm thankful that I can that, that I, I love being able to declare God's word without having to defend it to those in the congregation who want to see me fired or whatever. I, right. I, I love it. So mm -hmm. that's my story and I'm sticking to it. As they say. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and we're very grateful. We're very oh. grateful. Oh. Well, so let me, let me go back a little bit too. So your family was, were, were they in your congregation? Were they in the church? The, a couple of them are in the same denomination, Seventh-day okay. Adventist. Okay. Uh, some of them are not. Okay. Um, and, and they all live in a different state than I live in. Okay. So, yeah, we're, they were never in my congregation. Okay. And so, so you're still in conversation with them and they're still in conversation with you as much as always. Did this, I, I oh, guess oh, I'm yes. asking, did, that, did this affect your relationship with your family? Oh, oh yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think to the most part of that there is one who has watched most of my videos, um, disagrees. Um, uh, she would say she has a different opinion. Uh, maybe I would be arrogant and say, no, you don't have a different opinion. The, the, the evidence is out there so clear that it's really, truly not open to a different opinion. I'm sorry to sound so arrogant, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh, you can you can reject, you can accept or deny, but there are some things that are just not open for a, a different side of this, not, mm -hmm. not when you look at these, uh, these passages. Mm -hmm. But to the most part, it's, they don't want to hear it. Uh, they would just rather avoid it. And so mm -hmm. I'm just hoping that my videos are there so that if the time comes when mm -hmm someone in one of the family, one of the family members comes out and one of their children, grandchildren, whatever comes mm -hmm. out that they will be able to go back and look and say, Hey, um, mm -hmm. this is helpful. You know, yeah. That's, that's yeah. my prayer. 
Yeah, that is my prayer to Pastor Chester. And it, and, and then you've just opened up your knowledge and your wisdom, you know, to the family, the extended church family, you know, all of us, you know, all of us that are still trying to reclaim a, a faith that we felt me personally, I felt was taken from me. You know, I'm, yes. I'm writing a, a memoir in the subtitle, which is not quite nailed down yet, but um, it's gay with God reclaiming my faith uh, <laughs> by honoring myself. And by honoring myself, I mean the self that God created. And it's, yes. you know, you know, I'm 63 and it's still the journey of having to battle everybody else's external opinion and, and just the legality of how the laws are made and, you know, how we are able to, you know, continue to move forward, not only in our faith, but in our day-to-day -day lives of getting yes. healthcare and housing and yada, da, da, yes. da, 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 mm -hmm. and, um, and getting that into law so that we don't have it wiped away with whoever's sitting behind the big desk, you know, it's oh, like, a, right. okay, you've oh. got rights. No, oh. you don't. <laughs> yeah. it's like oh. Worst roller coaster ride ever. So. Oh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure. And, and I think that it's important for cisgender particularly pastors mm, to be yes. able to get out there and declare that so that we're not saying, hey, we're defending who we are. We're defending what we find in scripture. And, and I'm happy to say that I'm not the only pastor doing it. There are a lot no, of pastors out there. There, there <laughs> are more now than ever. And even uh, I go to the Episcopal church here in town and our pastor, um, our priest, <laughs> I was not raised Episcopalian. So I, the lingo is still new to me, but uh, our sure. priest, Father <laughs> Joe, uh, came to me and said, would you want me to do a pride mass for you guys this month? And I'm like, Oh, what? wow. What? And so wow. um, at the end of this month, we're going to have a pride mass outside oh. at the outdoor chapel. Um, How awesome. Because he also, and one other member said it might feel better to people on the outside community that's not affiliated with us to come to an outdoor setting to yes. hear this and be a part of this instead of coming into the building because it took me a year to walk into the building i couldn't oh. even, i couldn't even do it and mm -hmm. um and so anyway but um i i do i do love the idea that that a lot of heterosexual cisgender preachers are mm -hmm. talking about this instead of because when I started coming out, a therapist sent me to to a minister mm -hmm. that was female and said, I just I want you to hear what she has to say. I think this would be helpful on your journey. And I said, why would she say anything good about homosexuality and and, and you know and the Bible? Why why would I go to a preacher? And she said, because she really believes that it's not a sin. And I said, Yeah, and what mm -hmm. is she gay? And she said, Well, yeah. And I said, So how is that helpful? Of course <laughs> she's gonna wave the <laughs> Was <laughs> but it was my first taste of someone looking at the scriptures and mm -hmm. but you know mm -hmm. there's this roller coaster of they tell you the truth about that but then you sit, sink back down into what you've always been told was the truth and oh, then you go back up and okay oh, i think i can believe it but no maybe i can't yes. well what if i'm wrong you know there's all of this tension between hearing good news and then not know if you can trust it you know because everybody thinks they know the truth but hearing it from someone who's not gay, I wish it didn't give more credibility, but because it's been the, you know, the straight people who have used the scriptures against us. So I think it's almost like more validation to hear them now yes. say, oh, by the way, this was wrong. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm willing to declare this if it means it costs me my job. Mm. Uh, and, and it's not because of who I am, other than it's because of who I am. And that is, I'm a follower of Christ. You know? Right. And I'm, I'm going to declare truth, whether it applies to me or not. Right. You know? Yes. Uh, and it and it does apply to me. If it applies to other people in my world, then it applies to me. Yes. You know. Yes. All right. So let's get let's get into the weeds a little bit. Tell my listeners why these clobber verses are have been misinterpreted, and and that the way they're read is not the literal inspired word of God, and says that we're going to hell. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I would first say that I, I think much of it comes uh, from the Victorian era. Um, a, a lot of the Bible interpretation and understanding that we have uh, about Scripture is from a very Victorian era where any time that you mentioned sex, it was a... Um, something that people just didn't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and sex was not something that you did for pleasure. Sex was something that you did for procreation. And even then it could only be done in the missionary position. Mm 
So how could anyone back then who had that view of sex know anything or be Uh able to interpret anything about the Uh Bible when it talked about sex because it was so difficult for them to consider anyway? So, so I would say, first of all, I think it has to do with, with when much of what we understand about sex was brought into Christianity during the Victorian era. Now, I, I would go back to say that each one of the passages need to be dealt with in their own particular context as well. Um, in, in Genesis chapter 19, where you have the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, I mean, everybody refers to Sodom and Gomorrah for anyone who's gay, you know, yep. uh, that that's, that's what caused the cities to be burned. And we don't want that to happen to our country and to our city. And so therefore we've got to get rid of all of the gay, homosexual, LGBTQ. We've got to get rid of them so that our family, our, 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 our cities don't burn, you know, it's such a misunderstanding of that passage. Mm-hmm. When you read the story, it is clearly has nothing to do with people uh, being in love with each other. It clearly has to do within the context of a gang rape of of conquering. It was a cultural thing in those days and even in parts of the world, probably even now, that that when you conquered a particular country, the men were raped to to shame them Mm. and to demonstrate their conquering. It had nothing to do with homosexuality, Mm -hmm. you know, to to compare that. It would be to 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 home to to the gay community who is who, that's about loving one another has absolutely nothing to do with the context. Right. You know, and, and, then, and I could walk through there are about six clobber verses. Yeah. And we could walk through each one of those and I could just draw out a little bit from each one of them the best I could from memory. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to do that, but I'm just saying that that's that's an example. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And in the New Testament, they even say that the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was lack of hospitality oh yes i mean it's like okay if you want to believe this and you believe this is the inspired word of god okay good now go to this text and look at this inspired word of god as you say it and it's in hospitality it doesn't say gay sex it doesn't say anything about that Uh, absolutely Yeah. yeah yeah and and the hospitality goes along to confirm that the issue was about conquering and shaming yep you know, yeah. rather than being hospitable to yeah. the visitors of the town, let's mm-hmm. conquer them and shame them, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, I, I and, and the interesting thing is, is sometimes when when you share this with someone who's never seen it before, there's a light that goes off and says, ah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. While there are many others who say, oh, no, I don't want to accept that. That might mean I have to change my mind. Yes, yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, and it, it, to me, it is confusing to, to look at certain places where it indicates that, that this would be the inspired word of God. And, you know, but I'm beginning to learn from many other people that it may be, it may be inspired by God because people wanted to share the word. However, it's. It's not just about that. It's about how they taught, you know, we talked before we came on about parables and how not everything is a hundred percent exactly the way it is in the Bible. Not even, you know, some of the things that involve Jesus, you know, in the miracles he did, I, you know, there's just so many questions, you know, well, (laughs) yes, one of the gospel writers says that Jesus heals blind Bartimaeus on his way into, on his way into Jericho. Another one says he heals blind Bartimaeus on his way out. So what yes. did it happen? Was he going in or as he was going out? Or how does that matter? Well, and that's the big question. The big question is what really matters? You know, does it matter that Jesus walked on water? Well, that would yeah. be awesome and cool. And, yeah. you know, it, and like I said before, if if we can't if we can't believe some of the miracles or all the miracles that happened in the Bible, can we believe the miracle of the Ascension? Because, I mean, that's a big deal, you know, getting oh, yeah getting born to Mary is a big deal. That's a miracle. And if we don't have that, and if that's not true, so looking at what is true, what's not true, what's been misinterpreted, it can make your head spin. (laughs) Yeah. And and the fact that we weren't there, you know, how can we verify whether it did or it didn't? (laughs) 
So yep. sometimes I think it's just as it's just as much difficult to say that it didn't happen as it is to say that it did happen because we are not eyewitnesses. Right. <laughs> but, right. but we can say, does it really matter whether it happened or not? Uh, a perfect example is the story of Joseph with his coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible doesn't say he had a coat of many colors. The, 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 the original language said that his father made him a coat full length down to his feet. That's all it says. But what that tells us, according to the culture, is that his father made him a priestly robe, which meant that his father placed him above his brothers. Whether it had many colors or not it has nothing to do with it, you know, but does it matter that the Bible says he had a coat of many colors? No, it doesn't really matter. His father made him a special coat that his brothers were jealous of, you know, but sometimes when we look back into the original language, we can find a clearer understanding of things that help us to understand the story. Was his brothers just jealous because he had a prettier coat than they had? Or were they jealous because his father placed him above the rest of them yeah. as the priest family? Yeah, and like the, they favored him. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same is true with the LGBTQ topics. You know, if we look back and see what the original language says, then it can change our picture drastically. Mm -hmm. um, the, the word homosexual was never in the Bible until 1946. Mm -hmm. So when, when we see the word homosexual in uh, First Corinthians and, and uh, I think it's First Timothy, uh, the, the word was not originally there until 1946. It was more, the, 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 the original language means more of a boy abuser. Mm because it was their culture at, at that particular time, the heathen culture was that a man who had the money, who was wealthy enough, would, would, would take in a prepubescent -pub boy as his sex slave. Oh. Mm -hmm. he, he was a boy abuser. So he would keep this boy around as a sex slave until he became manly, and then he would send him off and go get another one. In, in our culture today, we would not tolerate that kind of thing. Right. But to interpret it as how as homosexual is completely out of context. Yeah, yeah. Just the whole idea that homosexuals are perverted and that they would abuse children and manipulate children is is not even statistically accurate. Oh, that's of the, right. Uh, of the people caught for that crime, they are straight most of the time. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm not saying right. always, but most of the time. And so it's yeah. the it's it's just this whole idea that people were had this passed down and that ministers were taught the same way that it, I mean, it was just like this avalanche of this is what we believe. And yeah. no one ever, even in, in a lot of the Bible schools, because I, I have a B.A. in theology that never went into any of this. You don't, do, it's not even touched. No, not nobody wants even. To, yeah, no, <laughs> nobody wants to touch it because yeah. they're afraid of the same thing happening to them that happened to <laughs> me. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. You brave souls that, that spoke it anyway. And that's, but that's being a disciple of Christ, like you said, that we don't, yes. we don't back down from the truth, even if we know there's going to be peril, because at the end of the day, um, you know, there is no peril if we are speaking the truth and that's what we're, we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Yeah, 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 that's right. So, so this is not one of the clobber verses, but let me just clear this up since I have you here. <laughs> so <laughs> as I, as I came into the Episcopal church, I started leaning in and, and doing more things. And, and one of the things I volunteered to do was to be a lector where I, I would go up and read the scriptures before the mm -hmm. sermon. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, one of the very first times, it wasn't the first time, the first time I did it was on Pentecost, which I should have kicked myself because I didn't look at, I didn't, when I signed up, I didn't look ahead at what the scriptures would be, but it was all the words <laughs> that I could not pronounce. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of, of course. All of, of course, all of those that's... words. <laughs> Google and I became <laughs> friends. <laughs> How do I Murphy's pronounce law. this? That's right. That's right. <laughs> but one of the first times that I was up there, I had to read the passage about a man will leave his family and, uh, you know, and it's man and woman, you know, it's always Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, you know, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have any thoughts or insights for our community about why, why it was Adam and Eve and why we don't need to have that continue thrown into our face that you can't be gay and be married because you're two women and not a man and a woman and all that 
drama. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, if we do accept the creation story, and I do, that it was Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. um, then that's the only way of procreation. Mm -hmm. uh, but did they both have black hair? Did they both have dark eyes? Um, considering that part of the world, probably Jesus was probably not light skinned like we are, though right. that's, where his, that's where his pictures, that's what the pictures are. He's yep. light skinned with blue eyes. Not yeah. happening in, yeah, not <laughs> you know? happening in Jerusalem, people. <laughs> but, yeah, but from Adam and Eve, we have people who have blue eyes and blonde hair and even red hair. And 2% of the population have red hair hair and that's about the same percentage of the people who are lgbtq so do we judge people who are red hair you, you know if 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 all of this came from two people then should they all look alike did, did, did god make cookie cookie cutter men and women to where they're all the same height they're all the same color hair they're all the same eyes no nor nor are we inside either uh, I, I don't know if that if that helps any but 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 the beauty of of creation is that we're all different all from the same original father and mother yeah well and god didn't create airplanes either but somebody else <laughs> created an airplane and now That's we right. and now we fly in it now so, we fly. so it's the context of the purpose is what i'm hearing you say what was the purpose in early creation it was to planet the earth you know yes. to, oh, not yeah. planet but but to give <laughs> sure <laughs> Put yeah. people on the earth is what I'm trying to say. Let's yeah, plant yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got to put people on there and we're going to do it this way. Was it the only way? Was it the only right way? Or, or that's just the way it worked out and the way God wanted it to work out. And then we evolve and we grow yeah. mm -hmm. and we experience more. And God continues to give us more and more time in diversity among each other to do what we are commanded to do. That's quite clear is to love. Yes, yes. Yes. And, and and I just find that fascinating that Jesus says that that's the greatest commandment. Yes. You know, of all the love things. the Lord with, yeah, <laughs> love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And then he laid, then at, at, at another point, he says, this is the greatest commandment that you love one another. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I hate this phrase of uh, love the sinner, but hate oh. the sin. Oh, so that, do we all. Is, oh, oh, that is so contradictive. That's that, that's like me saying, oh, I love you, but there's one part about you that I really don't love. Uh, that's right. You know, that that's really what that's saying. That's right. <laughs> that That's terrible. Yeah, and you can't love me and, and do harm to me. So every time you vote for a homophobic law, then right. you're not loving me. You don't, you wouldn't love me and vote that way. You wouldn't love me and follow someone who wants to take away my rights. Right. That's not love. You yeah. know, even though no, I'm, I'm vegan, even before I was vegan, I stopped eating at if I know that there's a restaurant that's pre, um, predominantly homophobic and I will not eat there. Now, right, me too. is it <laughs> is it going to change their their outcome of the, the money they get? No, but All I right. align. But I align my heart with not putting it that energy into my body and 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 going along with what they believe and yes. so we stand up for people and sometimes we stand up with giving or not not giving ourselves permission to buy the things from companies that are inappropriate and mm -hmm. not loving and generous and i may not know them all but mm -hmm. i i only do better when i know better and when i know better i won't buy your product and i won't shop at your store and i won't do this or that you know yeah I feel the same way. Yeah. yeah. And those of us who are in rural places and maybe can't get to anywhere other than a Walmart or somewhere else, you know, there's grace. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you got to get your laundry detergent. You're not going to hell because you, you shop there. Just <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It's just a time for us to show up and, and be diverse ourselves and say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Goes both ways. I want you to accept me every once in a while. I got to shop with, where you are. So. <laughs> but overall, if we can do the best we can. And yeah, I think that's amen. the journey we got to do the best we can for each other and that's what you're doing you're putting your the best you can spin on what you're understanding based on your knowledge and your experience and your study of the word and and that's that's where i want to be i want to be able to look at these passages and be able to 
to understand where the d- misconnect is, you know, cause mm-hmm. I, I might not understand the original text. I may not know where to go for that, you know? So, so how did you, I mean, I know that you were, you were in school and, and you got your degree in this, but tell me about how you knew to look at exactly what you needed to look at to tear these verses apart and kind of break it down. Well, part of it is, growing up in a church, you're kind of familiar with the passages that are used to clobber Mm -hmm. the LGBTQ community. Now, now I was not familiar with the term clobber. Uh, I I, I didn't go into this saying, I'm going to look at the clobber verses because uh, I was not in that that conversation, you know, right. I just went back to look at the verses that I knew that as a general rule, people consider to be the verses that are against homosexuality. Mm-hmm. And, and any theologian can easily find those. Mm-hmm. Uh, any Christian can mm-hmm. easily find those. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went back to look at those. And when I did, um, I found something that, that, that I can't say was surprising to me. Because Mm -hmm. as I said, I understood the gospel well enough to know that God is accepting and loving of all of us. So that's where I began. Here's the gospel, which is the good news for every kindred nation, people, and and tongue. That means even the people of the LGBTQ community. This is good news for all people. So how does understanding the gospel, the doing and dying of Jesus plus nothing, period, period, Mm-hmm. How does that fit within this context? So when I went back and looked at those verses and I did deeper research and I got out my, uh, my lexicons and I got out my Greek and my Hebrew and, and did some of, those re- some of the research, I didn't find so much that shocked and surprised me as much as I felt confirmed by this is the gospel. The gospel is this powerful that you can find this good news. Mm -hmm. And, and and in some ways I was shocked that, wow, how has, how has the misinterpretation gotten so out of control? Yes. Yes. (laughs) That's that's the shocking thing. (laughs) Yes, it is. It is. It's just like, feed them. They vomited out, feed them some more. They vomited out. And there's Uh, no there doesn't yeah. seem to be any connection to the truth in some of that. Yeah. Well, and, and what's tragic, you were talking about this on again, off again, depending upon who's sitting behind the big, yeah. the big desk. Yeah. The tragedy is, is that these politicians who are not theologians, they're politicians, they're in yes. the business for, uh, of making people that, that like them, like them and keeping them happy. And when they gaslight evangelical Mm. Christians into thinking that they are really, that they have their back, they become the theologians of our country. Mm -hmm. And the theologians are the ones who are ignored. And so the pot, these, I'm sorry to say, right wing Mm -hmm. politicians become the theologians and the interpreters of God's word and Christians, many Christians buy into it hook, line and sinker. And it's tragic. It is. It's just, it is. And, you know, just the, the Christian nationalism that's happening rampantly right now, and that everybody needs to be Christian. And it's not, I'm not saying that being Christian is not an awesome thing. I'm saying that it is not the government's right to tell us that we have to be That's right. Any way that we are like, I can be Episcopalian. You can be Seventh-day Adventist. It, you know, we have to be able to see God through our lens and we have to be able to worship the way we feel comfortable from inside of us. And no one should demand that. What, you know, you're going to take all the Jews and send them back to Jerusalem. That's what they want. Right. Yeah. And, and and beyond that, uh, Muslim, Mm -hmm. Hindu, Yes. They should have the right to find God in whatever way they do. That, that is why we are a, a country that is not supposed to be interpreted by religion or, or managed by religion, Christianity or any other. Right. I, I'm sorry that I'm getting so worked up. Over this, well, really no, go ahead. Please up. do. Please do get worked <laughs> up. Somebody needs to get worked up because we're passively going back into history. Yes. We yeah. are, we are walking backwards into history because we've lost our ability to be decent 
and aware and mm-hmm. conscious of what it really means to follow Jesus. Yes. You know, if you're truly <clears throat> saying that everybody needs to be Christian and we need to follow, you know, Jesus, but they may not be saying that the word Jesus, maybe they just say we have to follow our Christianity, but that's not Christianity to exclude. If you know anything about Jesus, he's not an exclusionary man. I mean, that's right. Yeah. And you can't use that as your premise to say, we all need to be Christian. He wasn't even identified as a Christian. Right. He right. was Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> well, even, even the apostle Paul, and I'm trying to remember exactly where it's found. I think it's in, um, oh, I, I, I'm thinking that it's in Acts 19. I'm not real sure of where Paul goes to the Areopagus. And uh, it, it's, it's where the Greeks argued their, their views. Mm-hmm. And, and Paul goes and he sees all of these, these different altars that were to all of these different gods. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he saw an altar to the unknown God, which the Greeks considered to be the God that they didn't even know that was above all of the others. <laughs> you know, Paul could have come in there and said, tear down all of these altars, every single altar. They're all just heresy and they're all terrible They're, you know instead he said men of athens i can see that you are a very religious people and i'm here to declare the god that you worship here to this unknown god <laughs> that is jesus <laughs> christ and it's so amazing you know that that's what christianity is yeah. and and unfortunately what we're seeing in as as you've already said in our national and in our uh, political Christianity is not Christianity at all. I don't even like being compared to that in terms of Christianity. I know. You know? I know. It has t- it has tainted that word. I, I I almost prefer to just say I'm a Jesus follower. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Our, our our bishop talks about being part of the the Jesus movement, and let's just yeah, yeah let's just do that. <laughs> yeah. We'll get- We'll get T-shirts. <laughs> well, in fact, it was called. It was called in, in Bible times. It was just called the way. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. was the term. You know, it was just called the way. And and how beautiful that is. You know. Yes. That the way. The way of love. There the you way, go. The way. The way of love. <laughs> Amen. That's all we need. Let's go back to the little candles. You know that people held and sing the little song. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. And, <laughs> And, and my hope is, as you said, there are more and more pastors who mm-hmm. are declaring these things, clergy, mm-hmm. priests, mm-hmm. And, and, yep. and others who, who are declaring these kinds of things. And I, I, I don't know that we will ever get to a place where our country and our world, well, certainly not our world, but our country is, is as fully accepting. But I'm 64 years old. And when I was a child in beginning school, Mm -hmm. and I was left handed, they were not slapping my hand for being left handed, but they were constantly pulling my pencil out of my left hand because that was wrong. That was wrong. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And and we're past that. We're we're, we're past that. Nobody really cares whether you're left handed or right handed now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, But by the way, I'm a substitute teacher now for K through 12. (laughs) Yeah. Mostly working in a in a a middle school. And I love it. And there are left handed kids all over the school. (laughs) And I say, yeah, go lefties. You know. (laughs) But but I hope someday. Uh-huh. I hope someday that 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 that's the way it will be for LGBTQ yes. people, children in schools and others. It'll just be no big deal. You know, yeah. we're all accepted, whether yeah. you're left handed, right handed, whether you're red hair or dark hair or, or gay or straight. And, and that's what we're all pushing for and mm-hmm. working toward, you know, mm-hmm. whether it happens in our lifetime or not. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know what will happen in our lifetime because I would have almost put money on the fact that I wouldn't be legally married before I was dead and I'm legally married. So, oh, you know. congratulations. Rah, rah. Yeah, I know. Rah, rah me. It's a, yeah. So, you uh, know, hallelujah. I never, I never thought that, yeah. that, that we would move that fast at that yeah. time. And, you know, and I'm hoping that we continue to stay married and that they don't mess anything up with that oh, in yes, the future. Yes. But, you know, that's, we can see the growth and then there's the slide and we see growth Mm -hmm. and there's a slide. And if Mm -hmm. we could just stay, 
you know, vigilant with our truth and allow ourselves to reclaim the faith that we always wanted to have. Yes. That's, that's all we can do. And then we have more support now than ever. And that's what I want all the, the folks that listen to hear me say is that, you know, being gay with God does not mean that you understand God the same way I do or the same way your church used to, you know, it's, it's being just the acknowledgement that you can still be in relationship with the God of your understanding and that God yes. still wants to love you. And that all the things in the Bible that were misinterpreted, we've got, we've got books, we've got Pastor Chester, <laughs> go to the YouTube <laughs> channel, people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No kidding. Yeah, so, it's, it's refreshing to have it in that format. And I just love mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I'm, I'm so excited that, that we live in an age of technology, which mm -hmm. I'm really kind of uh, I, I really don't know a whole lot about technology, but I sure have fun with you, YouTube and I'm learning as <laughs> I go. But but to be able to get that kind of message out so much further than mm. being able to just do it in tiny little conservative churches that I love, don't get me wrong, I mm -hmm. loved I loved pastoral ministry for nearly 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I would say that within the churches that 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 I served, that Everyone in the everyone in the congregation had different views about things, and that was yeah. okay. Why yeah. is it that we can't have different views about this? Why, yeah. why is it that we can't be more accepting of others who are LGBTQ? And that's because you take it back to some really rigid things that we've not given up on since the Victorian age. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've ignored um, the theologians who have done the research to really show what the Bible really says. And much of that ignoring is because people in the church don't want to hear it. And our political, our politics of our church becomes mm -hmm. as political as a politics of the country and yes. nobody wants to offend, you know, the saints. And mm -hmm. so the theologians don't get to make the changes sometimes mm -hmm. that need to be made in churches. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, it goes back to that, and that belief of the fear of, you know, if I go along with the sinner, then I'm also condemned. Mm -hmm. And that has been misinterpreted, I think. Oh, too. oh, oh, yes, so much. Can yes. you speak to that a little bit that that going along with the LGBTQ is not going to send you to hell too? <laughs> Well, I, I guess, you know, I'd, I'd have to think about it a little bit, but just off the cuff, you, mm -hmm. you know, the whole idea that uh, Jesus was accused of eating with the sinners, mm -hmm. you know, G Jesus was accused of, uh, of having a, a prostitute wash his feet, you know, uh, of, of hanging out with those in the community that people didn't like. Mm -hmm. And if we follow Jesus, then wouldn't those be the people that we would want to make friends with mm -hmm. if we really viewed them as sinners? Um, so sometimes being with people that the traditional religious people don't like is sometimes the more Christ-like than anyone else. Just because they view them that way doesn't mean that Jesus did. <laughs> Right. You know, right. That's uh, Jesus, the point. <laughs> Jesus didn't view them the way they did. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I guess I'm not really saying that as clearly as I would like to say. Uh, but I guess that's off the cuff. You know? Yeah. And I appreciate you taking that journey, even though, you know, you haven't studied that question. But and I think you're right that Jesus did not see them as sinners. That's right. Him. OK, and that he could see the the light of God in them, mm -hmm. even though no one else can see it. So mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. are all whether we're you know Christian or Hindu or whoever we are, we have a light inside of us that is that was breathed into all of us. Yes. And our package may be different. The way we present may be different, but we all are still holding that light and the breath of life in us. Mm -hmm. And that is why, and I've said this before, and it pains me to say it, but I will say it again, <laughs> that <laughs> God loves Trump as much as God loves me. Yes, he does. And I, as and, much as it pains me to both hear it. <laughs> and, and that's my journey. My journey is to continue to see the light in other people and I don't have to have him to dinner and I don't have to vote for him and I don't have to believe anything he tells me. However, I have to love the light in him and pray that he may find it one day. 
Well, let, let me let, let me take a, a different <laughs> approach with this too. Here he goes, guys. Do, Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe that God loves every person alive. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that there are some passages in scripture that are also ignored. Uh, places, uh, Romans chapter 16 would be one of them. Second uh, Thessalonians chapter three. Romans 16 says, have nothing to do with busybodies. Um, second uh, Thessalonians says uh, something very similar to that about do not have anything to do with divisive people. Um, is it Proverbs? I'm going to misquote this. Uh, 16, I think it is. I, I'd have to Google it or, or look it up mm -hmm. where it says there are six things that God hates, yea, seven. And he runs down these different things that he hates, a lying tongue, a, mm -hmm. a cheating heart, and blah, 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 blah. But at the very end, it says, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Mm -hmm. It's the only one in which it says God hates this one, not, not the action. God hates this person who sows discord among the brethren. So I, I think that there are certain individuals mm. who are, who God would love them as human beings. Mm. And I, I don't know that we can fully comprehend in our finite minds, the mm. infinite. You know? Right, right. But, but God can love to a certain point And yet at the same time, say this person cannot exist throughout eternity. Mm. Be, because there is so much hatred and division in this person, it, 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 the most loving thing to do to them, and, and my understanding of hell is not eternal burning and eternal life in hell. I don't believe that. You know, My view of hell is a separation from God. It's death. It's, mm. it's finished. It's gone. You know, annihilation. You know, and, and, and that's a, another whole theological thing to get into. Mm -hmm. but, but the most merciful thing that he can do to someone who is that hateful and that divisive is to put them out of their misery mm. yeah I, i'm sorry that sounds arrogant and hard mm. um but that doesn't mean that i don't love individuals for who they are but i i do believe that when the bible tells us have nothing to do with these people that that there's a problem that there's a point where we can say I've just got to keep my distance. They're too mm -hmm. divisive. They're too harm. They are too harmful to the LGBTQ plus community. And if that mm -hmm. means I'm not going to buy at their restaurant, that That's also right. means that I'm not going to be their buddy. That's right. <laughs> you know. That's and right. And go sit and have friends with uh -huh. them and be friends with them. Right. I I'm right. sorry. I'm just not going to do that. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And I'm not going to feel guilty about it. <laughs> right. And I believe that's true. I believe it's true that I can, you know, I can acknowledge that he also was created from God just as I am. And God probably loves him as his child. However, I don't have to be friends with him and I don't, right. and I don't have to ever <laughs> invite Amen. him to my home. Amen. Um, yep. Amen. We said it. We believe it now. Y'all go vomit that out. <laughs> That's my story. That's our story. We're sticking to it. <laughs> well, and that gives us the free, <clears throat> the freedom though, to, to remember that none of us are perfect and will never be. And that's okay. And, yeah, that's and as long as we continue to, to desire and come as close to Jesus as we can, <laughs> then that's all we can do, you know, yeah. but it's, but it's something that I think is an active thing. We can't just sit around and feel close to God. I think like your activism, speaking up for our community, you know, dispelling, you know, things in the Bible, not just for our community, but for other people and other different ways that you do it is that's, you're actively serving God, mm -hmm. you know, that's your ministry. And I, you know, this podcast, somebody says, I really like your ministry. And it took me by surprise because I'm thinking it's a podcast, but it's then a I, ministry, but then, but then I, <laughs> yes. I I'm claiming yes. that this is yeah. part of I'm, my amen. ministry yeah. and, you yeah. know, coaching, you know, you know, the LGBTQ community, that's a ministry. It, my, mm -hmm. my, Anytime that I worked with anybody, I saw that really as a piece of me trying to show up the best way I could for God until I left the church. And then it was, I was just on my own, <laughs> but not really, but never, not really. <laughs> sure. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're never on our own, even if we're not a part of 
the church you right. know um right. we, we as long as we're a part of of god and 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 actively serving and caring for others i i take as much um concern and and intent and and time with those who are my lgbtq friends online mm-hmm. who whom i've never met any of them <laughs> face to face but through writing and them asking questions some of them will will send me a message that that they're they're struggling with you know just feeling insecure and all of these mm-hmm. kinds of things and I'll mm-hmm. you know let them know that God loves them and affirm them and give them a bible verse and those kind I take that as serious as I take my my recorded videos absolutely you know as much as my 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 message to be able to bring someone some some comfort and, mm-hmm. and and it has nothing to do with being clergy it has to do with being human that's right it has to do with being a follower of jesus and and yes. like you said none of us are perfect mm-hmm. but while i like to acknowledge that none of us are perfect and i'm sorry i'm a pastor i i throw out bible verses okay <laughs> i just do <laughs> go ahead <laughs> but one of my, my one of my favorite verses is hebrews 10:14 for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Mm. Those who are in the process of serving and loving others, those of us who are imperfect, we're, we're, we're not sanctified. The word sanctified is, is hagios, which means holy. Mm. You know, those of us who are in the process of just <laughs> trying to be as good as we can, by the offering of Jesus Christ, he has perfected us forever. In God's eyes, he looks at us and says, there's my daughter, Midge. Mm. She's perfect in my eyes. Aww. You know, how, how comforting that is to us mm-hmm. when we realize how fallen and broken we are in this fallen and broken world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Know? Yes. God still sees us as perfect. <laughs> well, and that verse was for me today. So thank you very much for bringing that up. That was perfect. Oh, praise <laughs> even the <Lord>. though perfect <laughs> is never perfect but anyway <laughs> oh my gosh I, I, see i love doing this because i get to meet the most incredible awesome people and i just feel like i'm you know that we're just having coffee and and having a conversation and that's what i love about this podcast is that it just it breeds authenticity we come well, here and, and we feeling- speak the truth yeah. And the feeling is mutual. It's just, mm-hmm. it's awesome to be able to sit here and have this conversation with you and to realize I'm not the only one that you have this conversation with, mm-hmm. that, that you are having these kinds of conversations with other people that you are out there in this is just, mm-hmm. it, it's, it, it's a wonderful feeling. It's a uh, mutual feeling. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And, I, and it's a testimony to folks to that think that God has abandoned you. It's not, I was never abandoned. I walked away. Mm -hmm, I walked mm -hmm. away because of people. I walked away because I couldn't understand at the age of four and a half, five, who made God. Mm -hmm. And my minister grandfather sent me to bed because he didn't know. (laughs) 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 You know, I've I've had a quest my whole life to get, you know, to not go to hell was one. One, I didn't want to go to hell. So (laughs) I wanted to get as close to God as possible. So I didn't go to that hell they kept talking about. And, um, and, and just to do the right thing, to be pleasing to God, to be his mm-hmm. beloved and to, mm-hmm. to be able to know that I was okay. And I thought that the facade that I had as a child, the thing I believed I was doing was getting closer to God by serving and doing things mm-hmm. and checking mm-hmm. off all the right boxes. And then when I realized that there was nothing I could do that would be right enough because I was gay and now I'm going to hell. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after several failed attempts at being okay with being gay and going to church, I just had to quit and I just couldn't take it anymore. Um, And then God never gave up. You know, I still Mm -hmm. kept trying time after time to get back to a church until Mm -hmm. I I hit the lottery and I found a church that really fits (laughs) me. (laughs) They get me. And not everybody in that church, I would be willing to bet, believes in homosexuality, you know, but that is their church, their cradle Episcopalians, and they've weathered the storm of all the who fly and they, they stay quiet and they sit in there and, you know, I'm about as out as I can possibly be. And, um, (laughs) and they just stay quiet because they're not, you know, they're not the type of person that's going to say that to my face. Mm -hmm. And, 
I found a place that I was, I am, I, I would think I'm 95% accepted as a child of God and not a sinner for being gay in that church. Mm-hmm. And that works for me. <laughs> well, and, and I, I think that you can find in God's word, a 100% guarantee. Yeah. yeah. Um, because uh, first John chapter five, verse, I'm going to say 13, somewhere around there. Okay. It says, um, it's talking about, um, let me give you a little bit of the context. It's talking about how if you believe the testimony of man, the testimony of God is better. And God has written this uh, that you might know that you have eternal life. Hmm. Uh, It says that if you have the son, you have life. And if you do not have the son, you do not have life. And I have written these things that you might know that you have eternal life. Mm. So check that out. First John chapter five, and somewhere in there, five. uh, Just read the whole chapter. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yes, yes, indeed. It is so cool <laughs> that, that, that the gospel writer or, or, or this writer um, wanted us to know that we can have assurance of eternal life, not because of our uh, mistakes and, and, and successes, but because of his success, because of that one offering you know, because Mm -hmm. of that, we can Mm -hmm. know it. So uh, that's another verse that I like to let people know about. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. I love it. So, so as we, as we wind up, which I hate to do because I love talking to you, but as we close, is there, is there anything left on your heart that you feel needs to be said today? And it doesn't have to be about clobber verses. It could be anything that's on your heart. Well, you know, I, I think that we have really covered the uh, a, a nice chunk. I won't even mm-hmm. say the gamut. We yeah, covered no. a nice chunk, yeah. you know. Yeah. That that there is there more to say, you know, after after I after I made videos on the six or seven clobber verses, mm-hmm. I thought, oh well, I don't have anything else to do. Uh, I don't have any other videos to do. I'll just have to just keep promoting these six videos. And it comes out now I've almost got 30 videos on this topic because there's always something more. Oh, there's always something <laughs> there's more. always something more. <laughs> it goes far beyond that. You know? Yeah. See, so now, now you're going to get right it. Off hand, <laughs> I, I guess I have to pass the opportunity to add something on, but I know that there's much more. <laughs> yeah. You're going to, you're going to go back and do a video for Midge on the, on the marriage thing. <laughs> oh, I would love to Adam actually, and Eve and not, don't worry about Steve. <laughs> Steve actually, I do have a video on marriage on gay marriage. Okay. Ooh, yes, see yeah, guys, yeah, I missed that one. Yep. It, it is there as well. So. All right. Well, I will go find that one too. Um, that is awesome. Pastor Chester, I, I love you. I do. I'm, I just think you're the greatest person in the world. Oh, God bless you. Well, I feel the same way for you, Mitch, and I'm so happy to be invited to this, and I hope we'll do it again. Oh, I want to do just, it again. Just I reach do. out to me again when it's something that you, that you want to do, and, yeah. and this is just really has been so much fun. Oh, so. wonderful. Wonderful. Yay. And, and I love you, too. Love your, <laughs> lo- love your ministry and what you're oh. doing. It is just awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This was, this was meant to be this connection. I'm so happy and we will talk again. And so guys, thank you listeners for coming back each week, supporting and sharing and subscribing wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to see more information and links to connect with Pastor Chester, go to the Gay With God show page at empoweredmidge.podbean.com and his links will be there. If you're questioning whether you can be gay and be in a relationship with God, If you are authentically on the LGBTQIA plus community, you have always been gay with God. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. Stay tuned to hear how you can join the Gay With God community. And remember to check out the Facebook group, Gay With God. We're doing a monthly faith journey group there, and we're getting into some really good conversations. So come and join us. Remember that if you want to join that Facebook group, answer all the questions because that really gets you on the inside, people. I need you to answer all the questions because I want to see you and have you be a part of the group. If you're coming out and you have a faith journey story that you want to tell, make sure that you go to the show page again at empoweredmidge.podbean.com and you can be a guest and just click the link and sign up for a day in time. Also, if you need a little support on your coming up faith journey store, you'll also see how to connect with me there and be a part of my empowering awakened hearts coaching practice. So guys, thank you again. Love you so much. See you next week.